Yes, uh, we were just talking about this example, uh, uh, a list of statements, and uh, we were calling the function toString in the structure int. So the question is, what is this structure? Well, structure is a set of types functions, exceptions, etc., that we want to encapsulate. So, structure is the encapsulation mechanism in the language. Like a class in C++ is the encapsulation mechanism in that language. Uh, so, one can expand the structure by typing open in if I do open int, I can see all the uh, functions and types that have been defined in that structure. For example, here I can see that uh, the int structure has a plus function that uh, maps a pair of integers to uh, int. A maps a pair of integer to int. And what did we look at? The we were looking at the two string function that maps an integer to string. So I guess I can then do two string. Uh, two. It gives me a string representation of the integer 2. And notice I didn't have to say int to string. I can do that, but I didn't have to because I had already given the command open int before, which gave me gave me uh, gave access to all these functions in the structure without having to prefix it with the structure name. Now, now we're coming back to uh, an issue that we talked about uh, when we were discussing uh, lambda calculus, the theoretical foundation behind uh, functional uh, program languages. Uh, so what we have been looking at uh, uh, in uh, when we were have been discussing ML is that we have been, uh, for example, declaring functions which take more than one argument. But technically, they actually took one argument, namely a two-tuple or a three-tuple. For example, uh, remember we, we defined a function called the first this way. And we said, well, a first takes two arguments x and y and returns x. Well, technically that's not true. Uh, uh, and we, we have actually also mentioned this, that the function first indeed takes a pair. It takes a single argument, which is a two-tuple, it is a pair, and it returns the first element of the pair, it returns x. And we can, uh, the, uh, the return from the uh, interpreter tells us that this is indeed true. It says that the, this function first is uh, maps a product, a product uh, type, uh, a uh, star b, so the first element of the pair has the type a, the second element of the pair has type b, and it maps, maps it to a. It maps it to a type that is of, of, the, of the same time as, as type as the first element. So when we use parentheses and then something inside the parentheses, we are actually just sending a single argument to the function, but we're sending a tuple. So we're sending a two-tuple or a three-tuple and so on. Now, and we, we actually did something similar earlier for the member function, for example. We looked at uh, the member function earlier. Notice here that we had a parenthesis open and then 
an element and a list. So this was really a pair that we uh, sent in as an uh, that member expects as a as a formal parameter. It expects a pair or a two tuple. Uh, however, sometimes it is convenient to write functions which take more than uh, one argument, and uh, it's convenient to to write it in uh, curried form. And now I guess we have to. Uh, 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 look back at what we were talking about. We, as I said earlier, we, we examined this when we were discussing lambda calculus, and the example that we gave is that, uh, well, first we said, what is currying? Any function with n arguments can be written as a function with n minus 1 arguments, and recursively, until no arguments are left. And this is technique is called currying after a, 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 a person, Haskell, curry. Uh, so the example that we gave was that, uh, for example, the, the sum of 1 and 3 is written, of course, in infix form as 1 plus 3. In lambda calculus, we write it as plus 1, 3, or if we follow the syntax strictly, if we try to generate uh, this, a, a string from the uh, BNF form for lambda calculus, we would actually end up with this, parenthesis open, Another parenthesis open, plus one, parenthesis closes, then three, and parenthesis closes. This is, the, this is what we would get if we, if we use the uh, backwards noun form or the context-free grammar of the lambda calculus to generate a string. So in this case, we can look at plus one as a function which adds one to its argument. So what are we saying? Instead of looking at this as a fun the function plus taking two arguments, we uh, we write it as a as a function that takes one argument uh, the function plus one takes one argument, three in this case, and the function plus one is a function which adds one to its argument. So this is the this is the basic idea to uh, write a function, uh, uh, convert a function that has n, arg n arguments to a function that has n minus one arguments, and this we, we would we would be able to do this recursively. Now let's take an example. Let's look at an example where we uh, don't have parentheses following the function name. So let, let's first actually look at the way we ha have been discussing up till now. So here we have a function called exp exponent 1. It takes a pair, so it takes a single argument, it takes a pair. The first element is a, a real number and the second one is an integer. And uh, if, and this, uh, uh, the, the, the function of this, uh, or the goal of this function is to compute x to the uh, power of the second element. So if the power is 0, then x to the 0 power is always 1. So that's the first pattern. If uh, else we have the pattern, so we, we have a pattern where we have x and y, and the result of, th <coughs> of that is just x times uh, recursively calling exponent 1, uh, with x and y minus 1. So, for example, if we are computing uh, 2.0 to the power 3, then that will be equal to 2 times exponent 1 of 2.0, of 2, 2 x to the... Uh, so, 2 times 2 to the second power, and so on. And what does the... What does the interpreter tell us about this function? Well, it says that it takes a pair of uh, real times int, so it's a product. Re the first component of the pair is a real number, and the second component of the pair is an integer. So it takes a real uh, times int and returns a real number. Now, there is another way to write this function and that's without using uh, the parenthesis. So if we do that, the logic is really the same. 
we have x and 0 as arguments. Now we have two arguments instead of a single argument consisting of a pair. If, if the second argument c is 0, then we know that the result is 1 because x to the power 0 is 1. And the logic of the, of the other case is similar. But notice what the interpreter tells us now. Now it tells us that this is a function from real to int to real. This is different from what we had here. Here we had a pair of real and int that maps to a real. Here we have something different. And now the question is, how do we interpret this? How do we interpret real arrow int arrow real? Well, this is equivalent to real maps to parenthesis open int maps to real parenthesis closes. What does that mean? Well, it means a function that takes a real as an argument and returns a function which maps an int to real. Remember, the arrow it just denotes function type. So we have here, on the left-hand side, we have the input to the function, which is a, of type real. And on the, on the right-hand side, we have the result. So it takes a real and maps it to a functional type. What we have here on the right hand side into real is a functional type. So, and that type is obviously a function that maps an into real. So, if we call exponent 2 of 3.0 and 4, then so we're saying basically we want to compute 3.0 to the fourth power. Then what happens is that we get a new temporary function, let's call it g, of type into real. That's the, what we had here on the right hand side. And that function takes an exponent y as an argument and returns g of y. That is to say it returns 3.0 to the power of y. And the re result is really a g1. So if I load this, whoops, it was, I guess it was not called exponent. What did I call this? Oh, I actually did call it exponent, so maybe there's a some error in it. Let me try again. Hmm, interesting. If I close this, try it again. Now everything is fine. Well, I might have made some mistake that earlier. So I have these two functions, exponent 1, which is uh, the maps a pair of real and int to a real, and then exponent 2, that takes a real as, a, as an input and returns a function that maps an int to a real. So notice that what we are doing uh, Instead of looking at this as a function that takes two arguments, we look at it as a function that takes one argument, but returns a function that maps into real. 
converting the function from two arguments to one argument. So it returns a function that con that co uh, maps uh, into real. So when we call exponent 2 with 3.0 and 4, we internally what happens is that we get a function uh, of type g that maps into real and that function takes some exponent y as an argument and returns a g of y which is 3.0 to the power of y. And in that case uh, our y is actually 4 because we call the, exp ex the function exponent 2 with 3.0 and 4. So if we try this exponent of 3.0 and 4 uh, oops exponent 2 was it called I get 81 3 to the power of, of 4 that's 81 uh, and this is of course the same as calling exponent 1 I just have to call it with uh, with a pair I get 81 so you might ask, okay, what's the big deal? Why do I have two possible uh, methods here? Well, the big deal is that I can use what is called partially instantiated functions. I can actually write a new f function now, which says I associate with the name g the result of calling exponent 2 only with a single parameter and what do I get back it tells me that g is a function that maps an int to real so when I call exponent 2 with a single parameter I get back a function that will raise 3 to the power of its own parameter. So if we go back to the definition of exponent 2, notice that when I called exponent 2 with a single parameter with the value 3.0, uh, the 3.0 point, uh, 3 here is, is my x, x is 3.0, so that's the known one, but y is unknown because I didn't pass it in as a parameter. So I'm getting a function back that will uh, expect a y, expects a single parameter, in, and will compute this, uh, this uh, expression. It knows what x is, but it doesn't know what y is. So that's why I'm getting back a function that will raise 3.0 to the to the uh, power of its own argument. So now I can say what is g of 4? It's 81. g, notice, g is a function. It's a function that maps its own argument or computes 3.0 to the power of its own argument, in this case 3.0 to the power of 4. And uh, this is what is what is called partially instantiated function because exponent 2 has two parameters but I instantiated the function only using a single parameter. When I instantiated using both parameters as I did earlier I got back a value which was 81 because it computed 3.0 to the power of 4 when I instantiated it using a single parameter, I got back a function which expects an argument and then I called it with the argument g of 4 and then I got 81 back. And then I have another possibility here. I can define a function cube by calling exponent 2 uh, with, okay, 2 parameters, I'm not partially instantiating it, instantiating it, instantiating it, instantiating it uh, but cube 
expects a value x which is real and cube will map that real type into a real because it will call exponent with that value so for example it, it, well it would whatever i will supply it with it will uh, uh, compute that one to the third power so if i do cube of 2.0 2.0 to the third power is, is 